I think we'll get started. My name is Katie Bark with Montana Team Nutrition and welcome to this month's School Nutrition Program update and chat. And if you haven't already, if you don't mind typing your name, the name of any of uh, your staff that are attending with you, the school district name in one email in the chat box. And uh, we will, um, that just helps us keep um, attendance. Okay, um, I'm gonna um, welcome uh, Deb Jones, School Nutrition Program Specialist from the Office of Public Instruction to just uh, take any questions that you may have about any uh, regulations or um, anything you have a question on concerning meal service right now, you're welcome to ask now either by putting a question in the chat or um, unmuting yourself and um, speak up. Okay, not hearing any questions. Um, later on in um, this hour, we're going to have Rochelle Davies, who's from Billings, and she's also a school nutrition program specialist, review the equipment grants that um, the USDA just released. We want to make sure you're aware of those in case um, you do want to apply for them. So she'll be going over that in a few minutes. Um, so we will... Uh, Deb, do you have anything you wanted to say or anything? Before uh, you no, the, the equipment grants is the new thing. And so we'll all have Rochelle outline those for us and point out where the resources are if you've missed the emails to, that point you to that. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, um, we really appreciate you being on today. What we were hoping to do um, today was just sort of do some menu planning sharing between you all, just because we know that um, for some of the schools, you are serving maybe a cold menu, and sometimes people just, you know, um, want some new ideas. So we thought we would um, try to facilitate some sharing. And then, uh, as you know, if you're on Montana Lunch Line, there's been a lot of discussion about what people are doing for meal service and also about um, having to quarantine. And so I guess I just wanted to make sure that um, if you are having to quarantine in your short staff or if you have to actually shut down your organization, your program for a little bit to know about some of the meal kit services that I know Devin from Target Range over in Missoula actually took some of the COVID 19 relief money their district got and bought some two weeks of meals to have from a meal uh, vendor just to have some on hand in case that would happen. So I thought it might be a good idea to just review these um, meal vendors. And I think this is available on a handout on School Nutrition Program's uh, website. So there's three Meals to You vendors that um, are listed. PepsiCo Food for Good is one. McLean Hunger Solutions is another and Chartway. And it's not that we're promoting these or anything. We just wanna make sure that people are aware of them. Has anybody used any of these or purchased any or other ones that they'd like to share you know, any information on? And Molly, thank you for watching the chat or Deb, if there are questions or comments, since I can't see it very well, just speak up. Um, just, just a note about those contract vendors. Um, I reached out to all of them to see what they could offer to Montana schools. 
And um, I got really good response from McLean Hunger Solutions. He gave me all kinds of um, ideas about how many, how much things might cost, and that they could definitely send meal boxes to homes as well. Um, that would meet the the summer food service program requirements. Um, I also uh, heard from another vendor that's not on our list, and I, I need to update this for us, um, Optimum Foods. Um, they are a smaller company, but the, and they'll ship UPS shipments or they'll ship a big shipment to your school or central distribution center where you could provide like uh, two, two meals or five meals or um, however many meals in a box that you might want. Um, so there are vendors, there are some other vendors out there for shelf-stable meals as well. So if you need that kind of information, just give um, me a shout at School Nutrition and I will send you the Optimum Foods contact stuff to when I can find it again. Thank you, Deb. Um, any other discussion on these, um, you know, shelf stable meal vendors or any discussion on this topic at all? Anyone would like to share? I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. We don't have to use them. <laughs> that sounds like Shelly from Deer Lodge. Yep. And do you have them on, st on hand or just? Um, I don't. Um, my backup plan is um, we have a janitor, a custodian who has worked in food service all his life until he started this job last year. He's going to step in. Well, that's good. Yeah. And if you have a, a simple menu planned, um, you know, cold menu items planned. Um, we did share some of the cold menu menus from like Colorado shared some, if anybody needs those, uh, we can put them in the uh, Google Drive for this, today's chat if you'd like those again. Just because as you know, as we all found out, it's so much easier to have a plan than to have to just, when a crisis happens, um, then start planning. So anything we can do to help you uh, at this time, we know you're under, extreme amount of pressure and stress just because you're probably having to change often or you might be short of staff. Um, so if there's anything we can help with, please let us know. Okay. Um, I don't think Pam Fru is on, but if Pam is on, if there's any announcements or anything with USDA Foods, um, you know, she obviously is available to answer any questions. And in um, December, she will be doing a web, one of the Wednesday webinars on USDA foods. So if you are wanting to learn more information about them, um, you'll definitely want to uh, tune into that Wednesday webinar. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if Brittany Motes has been able to join us yet. Um, I don't see her on with us yet, Katie. Okay, because she did develop, um, she was really looking for some ideas for cold menus. She has developed a three week menu cycle that um, I think she's gonna be on and we'll wait until she gets on so we, I can bring it up. Um, and um, we can go over those, but have there been any um, favorite cold menus or even if they're not cold, any favorite menu that you'd like to share with your peers that your students have liked? Um, just because it'd be nice to um, give each other some new ideas. Anybody willing to share one? We don't do a lot of cold right now, but I think their favorite is when we make our own um, pizza Lunchables. We just use the flat breads and cut them into quarters and then give them a cup of marinara and a cup of cheese and whatever other toppings we happen to send along. They love those. 
that seems to be a popular and it's not too hard on your staff to do, right? Uh, it seems like it's-, it's not Yeah, too they're hard. pretty simple. Because I know that is one of, um, I had um, put a request out on tips for school meals that rock and that was the one of the ideas that um, the director in Maine said one of her kids favorites. Another was a crispy chicken um, ranch, either like um, sandwich or wrap or even like a salad with the, um, you know, chicken strip, uh, chicken patty, their strips and like a, a, a cold, you know, salad using um, like um, breaded chicken or it could be grilled chicken. Another one was like a taco salad was, it seems to be popular and some people are using the little boats um, and putting everything in there. We did a cold taco wrap. I wondered how it would go over, but they liked it. We went made our taco meat, but then just put it all in there cold, just like a soft shell taco, but made it cold and wrapped it in a foil wrap. And they seemed to like it. Great idea. Anybody else? Katie, this is Cindy. I've been out of the loop for quite a while, but I remember um, as a director, in order to help kids recognize foods or serve them foods that they were used to and liked, a lot of times we would look at the fast food places and offer a healthier version. And I, I like the um, former comment about the Lunchable. I think the Lunchables are awful meals, but I think they could be used as a idea um, or to foster some new ideas or menus using products that are uh, required in the schools. And kids certainly know what Lunchables are. That's a great idea, Cindy. And thanks so much for um, joining us today from Lewistown. Well, I did want to just point out that there is a grab and go menu um, sort of cycle at the South Dakota State Extension that's at this website. If you are looking for ideas um, for cold menus, is anybody doing soup these days? We actually did uh, chicken noodle soup today. It went over really well. That's Kathy from yeah. and Carol. Yeah, from, sure. yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, I think with the cold weather that we're, it sounds like we're going to be getting next week, it's uh, so comforting. I just wasn't sure how realistic it was to do these days. Kathy, you send meals to the classroom, don't you? Yeah. It, yeah. Um, we only get 18 high schoolers get to eat in our lunch. Other than that, everything goes to the classroom. And we bought those um, brown Cambro um to go trays with the lids. And then we did find some styrofoam. Thank you to Debbie helping us and that fit in there just perfect. And we we're able to send soups and stuff to the classroom. And those um, trays keep the food warm for a long time. Excellent. And those are the trays, the Cambro with the um, coverings. I think we have a picture of your trays later on. So you, everybody will be able to see them. I was looking for some recipes and menu ideas for um, specifically for cold, cold menus being served in the classroom or cafeteria. But I did find a pretty easy soup recipe off of tips. And it's um, with USDA Foods, it's a tomato soup recipe. And I thought um, I can send it out or put it on in this folder for this chat. It's basically tomato sauce from USDA Foods. Some, it's using evaporated milk some seasonings and chicken base. So it's a really simple um, recipe and it is using, it'd be really inexpensive if you had um, USDA you know, tomato sauce to use. So if anybody wanted to try it, it counts as a cup equivalent, it counts as a whole half a cup of a red orange vegetable. Okay. 
Um, do you want to just make sure people know that there are recipe sources, a lot of recipe sources out there, some new ones that have been developed um, through some uh, agencies in California. Chef Ann still has her uh, recipe box. She's redone their, their website for the lunch box. It's, and, but if you um, look, find the recipes, you can use her recipes and you can scale them to what you need, um, which is really nice. And then I did, I know Turk, uh, you know, Thanksgiving's coming along and I don't know what people are doing for Thanksgiving um, meals. I was on a, the Lunch Assist uh, chat this morning that they have every two weeks. And one of the schools that was doing bulk meals was actually sending a whole turkey home <laughs> um, uh, with some, you know, dressing and, and vegetable uh, for a family of four, you know, or kids with, um, I don't know if they're getting some funds from um, other than USDA to actually send a, a meal home for uh, the whole family, which I thought was creative. But this is a recipe I found by, um, again, on tips for school meals that rock that people had shared. And it's a holiday turkey bowl. And if you were doing something like a bowl, because I realize bowls seem to be popular now, and um, I have that recipe too, which I will send out in the email. I'll send these recipes files um, out and I'll send it on Lunchline so everybody has them. Um, but if anybody wanted, it has, it's a standardized recipe for a holiday turkey bowl. So, and it, you can see what it, count, it credits as. Anybody have any ideas for their, what they're gonna be doing as a, as a turkey um, holiday meal or anything this year? Or what you normally do? We're doing the full-blown turkey dinner. Right. Awesome. And do you usually do it the week before? I do it the day before school gets out. We're doing a meatloaf dinner for ours. Meatloaf, mashed potatoes, beets, and squash. Nice. Yum. And squash is the harvest of the month vegetable today, or this yep. month. And this so... Month, yep. um, yeah. Um, excellent. That reminds me of a story, Katie. I was on Facebook like a week ago and one of my good friends, she was my best friend growing up and said, who remembers the turkey dinner from Thanksgiving with the mashed potatoes and the turkey in the gravy all mixed up and everybody chimed in and said, I do, I do how great that was. And would like to remake that someday for yourselves. So I don't, I don't tell anybody what I do really. I, I'm sure she knows, but I just thought how cool to see that conversation going on. You know, we're in our thirties and how impactful that was for us as kids. So I just love hearing that you guys still do the holiday dinners because it really does make an impact. Thanks for sharing Rochelle. That's awesome. Okay, Any, okay. Um, let's see. Um, just wanted to make sure you are aware of some of these. Um, there's a new Healthy School Recipes website that is um, run and it seems like there's a lot of chefs on it, but anybody can submit recipes and um, they, they really just, it's a, like a, a recipe source from recipes from all schools all over the nation. And they do have a five days cold sandwich menu. This is one of them from Danville Public Schools. And um, it was, you know, it's a little different. It's a um, chicken, Carib Caribbean chicken sub sandwich. And then it's served with a sweet potato, apple and pineapple uh, slaw, which sounds really different. So if you're looking for different uh, recipes, you may check that one out. And they also have five days cold salad menus there too. And here's like a taco salad that they're featuring USDA foods in this one, which is a really easy thing to do. Um, okay. Just wanted to again, point out that the uh, squash is the um, harvest of the month item this month. So if there is any squash soups you're making or I don't know if anybody ever does the um, 
squash and apple bake. It's sort of like a sweet potato apple bake. Um, any other great squash recipes? Anybody want to share? Squash just makes me think of like cinnamon and chopped nuts on top, like how comforting for the snow that's coming up soon in cold weather. Uh, how timely. Yeah, really. The um, one recipe that I, um, I haven't seen in a school, but um, my daughter actually got me on it. And it's super easy for a dinner. You take acorn squash, and actually you take it and you stuff, you, you like roast the squash, but then you make like a ground pork or ground turkey with apples and craisins and you can put some onions in there and you make it sort of like a taco meat type thing and you stuff it in the, in the squash and then just cook it for 10 more minutes. It's so good and so easy. And it's sort of like st stuffing, which I find is really comforting. <laughs> but you could almost make it as a casserole if you wanted to just cut the, the squash up. The other recipe that I found that if you're looking for like a fall, a sweet potato um, recipe, found it from Lee County Schools, which I don't know where that is because there's probably a lot of Lee counties in the nation, but this was from School Meals That Rock Ox also. And it's a pulled pork stuffed sweet potato. So I don't know if that sounds good to you. It's um, sort of, you know, like you'd have a baked potato bar. This would be sort of a sweet potato bar. So I'll send that. That would be amazing. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, so that's why I think if anybody's willing to try some of these recipes, even in small doses, let us know. But yeah, if it's USDA pulled pork, frozen USDA, and then the sweet potatoes. So anyway. Anybody else have any other recipes they want to share? Any recipe ideas? Katie, squash, pureed squash can be used as a substitute for pumpkin um, in baking. You can you do muffins or a bread or pancakes or even cookies. And that would be another way to use squash. Great idea. And they make them so sweet. Yeah. Um, I know it's not squash, but last week I made um, pumpkin bread and I mm -hmm. thought I had a case of pumpkin, pureed pumpkin in the pantry and I went and it was sweet potatoes. So I just mushed them up and used them yep, and it was works. the best bread. I bet. Thank you for those ideas. Um, I know in Butte, the family and consumer science teacher, when she was doing... Um, Harvest of the Month in our classrooms with Kurt from Butte. She made pumpkin, um, I think it was pumpkin or squash pancakes with the kids and they loved them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'd be really pretty. They'd be sort of really, really pretty. Um, Katie, this is Molly and I just put a link in the chat box. I just posted a lot of the recipes that we talked about two weeks ago in the Cooking Up Harvest of the Month Wednesday webinar. Um, and I know there were some squash recipes in there. And so if anybody wants to check back into that Google Drive, um, they could find some squash recipes there. Great, thank you, Molly. Because I was thinking of our little, uh, we had two dietetic interns and uh, they worked, to, they were here together for two weeks. And so we did have them develop the roasting um, squash little video, because if you, as you guys know, if you roast the vegetables, they make them a lot, lot sweeter and the kids will like them a lot, a lot of times, a lot better. And it's easy. Um, Gretchen Gross, um, I don't know, Gretchen, if you're on, but um, I don't know if you guys have been checking out the School Nutrition Association magazine for this month. They had some great ideas, um, some really creative ways to uh, reach families and increase their revenue during this time with some uh, family meal kits that families would buy. But, you know, as families are stressed with having to work and uh, if their kids are um, possibly home, if they're doing remote learning, they might be looking for some help 
of ready to go meals. And did anybody see these in the magazine this month? Katie, this is Gretchen. I was just gonna say too, I know some people who are selling for additional revenue for their programs, they're selling to like staff and faculty, you know, community members, things like pumpkin bars, things like that sweet potato bread you just mentioned, Shelly, that would be great to basically just get extra revenue for their program. If you have the extra capacity and time to do so, of course. Thanks for sharing, uh, Gretchen. These were, you know, they're just websites from some schools around the nation doing take and bake meals or curbside family meal. The other article that was in the October issue is stretching your budget with USDA foods. And it has some um, great recipes that you could um, use with USDA foods, like the Denver omelet. Um, oh, excuse me, I, I spelled omelet wrong, sorry. It was omelet bagel, one of them that I hadn't seen before. And then the uh, peanut butter and banana crunch overnight, overnight oats, um, or the orange sriracha protein bowl, again, is, is like a um, orange chicken bowl. So check those out. And then did you see um, Danielle Anderson from no Kid, Montana No Kid Hungry sent out a link, a message to Lunchline, and I just wanted to make sure people saw it. It's a uh, school meals marketing toolkit that the national level, you know, No Kid Hungry developed that has some excellent um, ready to use flyers, social media posts, a customized parent letter. And so I just wanted to make sure you have the toolkit. The one thing um, I found in it, which I forgot to make a slide on, but they have the school lunch versus bag lunch, nutrition and economics. And they it's sort of the, side-by-side -side comparison of the value of a school lunch versus home lunch, just that right now, obviously, if you're on the summer program, they may be free. Um, the nutritional profile of a balanced school meal that you guys are all providing is, you know, really um, pro nutrition packed. And it's not time-saving, obviously, to a parent um, is priceless. So anyway, check that out if you'd like. And then if you are looking for any kind of uh, marketing little short video, General Mills developed this one and it's really cute and short. And it just talks about, again, the value of school uh, meals. And um, if you're looking for anything on social media or to share even on your smart TVs in school. Has anybody looked at the kit or any, used anything from it? Okay, well, I just wanted to, um, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Rochelle in a minute to go over the new equipment grant application. But I did, we always appreciate when people share on Lunchline or share with us what they're doing. And um, Shelly and your staff from Deer Lodge did a really cute, uh, shared your Halloween um, menu of your pizza and then the witch's teeth was so cute. I just wanted to know what is the green in the corn for the witch's teeth? It's just a little black food coloring. Oh, it's food coloring. Okay, I couldn't figure out what it was, if it was cilantro or what. <laughs> it's really cute. Nope, we had lots of ideas of what it was from kids in the classrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cute. Um, Thanks. Michelle Carter from Livingston, um, she posted, as you saw, that caramel apples, look, that looked amazing. Um, as part of their school lunch that day. And then um, Big Sky School District, uh, Lindsay from, uh, I think it's Ofer School and then Big Sky High School, I think, did this, showed the meal. Um, and I thought the contrast on this blue tray is so pretty. Mummy wraps, swamp chips, zombie hands, and orange jack-o'-lanterns, and then... Uh, a little chocolate cookie, fat cookie. Do you guys all dress up or is that not something you guys do on Halloween? Just our t-shirts that we had. Cool. 
Anybody have anything to share with um, anything with Halloween? You'd like to share anything? I just think it's great that under the level of stress and everything that food service directors are doing, they still are taking being really creative and making meals fun. So putting out special Halloween meals is so generous. Really, I mean, I just think what you guys are all doing just to serve the meals this year is incredible. And um, so thank you for everybody's um, work on serving meals this year. I'm not sure what the superintendent will think when he sees we all had overtime, but hey, we had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Belfry uh, Tura also shared her menu um, meals with us and they were undead burritos, mini chef salads, a cup of killer veggies, fruit, and a trick-or-treat bag full of toys for dessert. So it's really cute. And then Kathy from Shoto, I know you're on and Cheryl. And you guys are really working hard to serve from scratch meals. Um, and like you said, you're doing majority of the in the classroom, and then um, your high school kids maybe are coming to the to the cafeteria. And we are going to show in just a minute the little thank you video that um, a teacher and your students did. I just thought it's so cute and it's so nice to be thanked. I think um, so. We'll show that in just a minute. But uh, thanks for sharing. So if you have things you want to share with us, we'd love it just because it's so nice since we can't come to the schools this year, or, you know, see you much. It's really nice to hear what you're doing. Okay, um, I'm going to skip this just because I want to make sure um, we have time for Rochelle to go over equipment grants and if there's any other questions, but this is a really cute little, this is this David Ross Stein. I don't know if anybody saw this, this was on social media. He's an artist, but he's come up with pandemic art. And then he came up with a, all on fruits and vegetables. And there's a cute little video on um, wearing masks and stuff. So it's a really cute way to train somebody or talk to somebody about wearing masks in a fun way. Okay. Um, I will stop sharing my screen, Rochelle, because you have a you have information, don't you? Okay. Hi, everybody. So good to see you all. Thanks for all that great information, Katie, and for collecting all those pictures. I loved seeing those this week on Lunchline. So yeah, like it was said, thank you, thank you for doing all of that amidst all the COVID craziness just going the extra mile. That is so cool to see. Um, so I just wanted to, I'll, I'll make this bigger. Um, I just wanted to talk real quick about the equipment grant. So we just put the information on our website. So we are now going to start collecting applications for the school year 2020-2021 equipment grant. So each year, we put out the equipment grant and start collecting applications. And then we go through a scoring process and can award some money for some pieces of equipment that you guys are looking for. So I'll show you where it's on the website in just a minute, but I wanted to point out a couple of things. So we need our applications back this year received in-house by December 18th. So I know that seems like you know, six, seven weeks away, I have plenty of time. But one of those things that we require is that you have three bids per piece of equipment. And sometimes that can take a little bit of time to do your shopping and then receive those three equipment bids. So just make sure you give yourself plenty of time. Um, one other thing I want to point out is that the authorized representative that's listed in maps is the person that has to sign this. So Maybe if you as the food service director or maybe your clerk is filling this out, just make sure that the authorized representative listed in maps is the person that actually signs that before it gets turned in. And of course, if you have questions and wanna know where to find that, double check, just call your regional specialist. Uh, we're happy to help you with that. Um, 
So in brief, we will be giving out money between $1,000 and $5,000 per piece of equipment. So each piece that you're applying for has to be at least $1,000 and we'll award you as much as $5,000 for that piece of equipment. So um, that can also include accompanying items. So let's say you're looking for a new salad bar, you get a quote for $3,000, but you also need some accompanying pieces like the, you know, the little trays and little pieces that um, you want to put the food in or you want to get some tongs or the ice uh, sheets that you can freeze to go underneath. Like those are all accompanying pieces that are needed to make your salad bar function. So go ahead and include those on your whole bid that you get from the vendor. What we can't include are what's called capital expenditures. So if you want to build a, a large freezer, or I'm sorry, you want to install a large walk-in freezer, but you need to extend the building to do that, that would be a capital improvement. We can't approve money for capital expenditures. So you could buy the freezer, but the district would have to fund the addition onto the building, if that makes sense. Um, you can apply for multiple pieces of equipment. So previously we were only allowing one piece of equipment and it's accompanying items. This year we're gonna allow multiple pieces of equipment. So still each piece that you're applying for has to have its three separate bids and each piece has to be between 1,000 and 5,000 individually. So your salad bar must be between 1,000 and 5,000 and if you want a proofer also, it has to be again between 1,000 and five, I'm sorry, it has to be at least 1,000, we'll give you up to 5,000. So anything above 5,000, the district would be responsible for paying for. Um, Aaron Turner is our equipment grant specialist and you can see her contact information listed here. Any questions that you have, you can direct at her or if you're talking to one of us, your regional specialists and happen to have questions, you can certainly ask us if needed, we'll refer you on to Erin. Um, and after this presentation, you can find Erin's information on the login page for maps or our contact page on the website. Um, so Erin did a short webinar a couple of weeks ago and we recorded that. So in our Google Drive folder where we house all of our recorded webinars and these SNP chats, you'll find another short video just specific to the equipment grant. So I believe it's about 15 minutes, so you can watch it pretty quickly. Um, and with that, I'm going to do a new screen share and show you guys where we you can look on our website to find the equipment grant. So all I did was go to the school nutrition programs section of OPI. But of course, if you go to the uh, main opi.mt.gov site, go to one of these drop downs, look for school nutrition programs. And then right here on the homepage, we have our 2020-2021 equipment assistance grant application. So when you click on this, there's the first full app grant application. And this has all of the background information, um, has some of those reminders that I just talked about, a little bit more of the definition. So a lot of this background information and the timeline. So grant applications received by December, here's where we notify in January funds should be expended by June 30th, and then a report due back to us at OPI by September 30th of next year. And then here we can see the application. So there's a few different parts. You'll notice that part one with your cover page, we're asking for basic information, district name, your mailing address. This is a fillable PDF, so you should be able to input all of your information and then you could save this and email it back. And then we get to, uh, you'll notice here part two, 
And this is gonna be relevant to the piece of equipment that you're asking for. And we do have it noted here that if you are requesting more than one piece of equipment, this part two needs to be completed for each piece of equipment. So if you're just doing one, just fill out this main application, save it and send it in. If you are looking for two pieces of equipment, we have separated out part two into this document. And if you click on that, it just has this part two. So you don't have to fill out everything, sign and date, uh, district name. You don't have to do all of that twice. We just want you to do this relevant piece where you talk about your second piece of equipment. Um, you could do three pieces of equipment. If um, you really need three pieces of equipment, feel free to apply. Uh, we do have, we, the reason we're asking for part two to be completed separately is that we have questions, supplement questions that we're looking to be answered. And then each piece of equipment gets scored separately according to our rubric here. So you can see our rubric, how we're gonna uh, award points and then start uh, awarding based on the points that are received for that application. So one thing I will point out is that um, these questions may not feel applicable when you are think, you know, if you're thinking about a specific piece of equipment, but you can see based on the rubric, we're asking, did you answer it fully? Did it explain your situation? It's pretty black and white. So even if it may not feel entirely applicable, I would encourage you to get creative on how you can tie this piece of equipment back into these questions so that you can get those points awarded. So with that, I uh, would like to open it up. Are there any questions on anything I just covered? And then see if I can find the chat box too. Oh, great. Thanks, Kelly, for putting the, the link in there for the equipment grant. And Clay specified where to find the authorized representative in MAPS. Thank you, Clay. Okay. So of course, like I said, uh, reach out as if you have questions when you're going through all this, uh, feel free to reach out to any of us or uh, definitely reach out to Aaron and uh, we'd love to help you walk through that. So I'm really looking forward to helping score those grant applications. It's always really fun to read those and to uh, help you guys get the equipment that you need. Katie, is there anything else that you wanted to cover today? Oh, uh, you are muted. Okay, there you go. I was just going to try to find, there's a great equipment list. Um, let me just find that and see if I can figure out how to share it. Um, here we go. Mm -hmm. From the No Kid Hungry, I don't know if it's on their best practices anyway, website from No Kid Hungry at the national level. Can you guys see this equipment list for meal service? This might help you think about things. Um, it goes over things for like meal service, but then it goes over way beyond packaging items. It does show the all of her quality system, some other uh, packaging things, but then it gets into equipment. And I, it even gives quotes of prices, you know, estimated it, it links to a vendor. We just thought this might be really helpful. Yeah, here's like a milk cooler. That would be something you could buy because it's $2,400. Um, refrigerator and air screens. I mean, it really gives you some great ideas for equipment. So 
I put this in the slideshow that I'll upload to the Google Drive. But if you just Google probably best practices, no kid hungry, um, and then it goes to the equipment list. Gretchen just posted a direct link to it in the chat box. Awesome. So if you can find it there. Thank you. Um, can you guys see this or not? Yeah, I can see it. Yes. I think that we want to take the time. I feel like you get your guy, your guys, this time is so limited. I don't want to keep you longer than I, than I feel like we should, but um, this is, um, as you know, Aubrey and, and uh, the farm to school team worked on these showcases. And if you didn't, weren't able to attend one of them in October, there was an October 2nd and an October 27th one. They are all, all the short little videos are now on our YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and then Google, find the Montana Team Nutrition channel, all of our, any video we do is there. Well, all the short little videos that were done for that are there. And so there's some great ones on some of the beef um, ranchers that are, you know, want to work with schools. But this one is one that Ginger Buchanan, the food service director at Huntley Project, who also works for us part-time as a farm to school coach, did have her kitchen. And she really has gotten some money to buy new equipment. So there's, she has a picture of a combi oven, a pizza dough maker, um, or dough, and there was one other thing. Oh, the Oliver Quality System. So anyway, if you have 10 minutes and you want to watch it, I'll put the link um, to this also in our the PowerPoint, but you can just go to our um, Montana Team Nutrition YouTube page. Because anyway, um, anybody have any other um, comments or anything on equipment? Hey, Katie, I realized there's one more thing I wanted to say. Hopefully you guys were all able to see my post on Lunchline. I was calling for recipes to credit. So if you guys have any recipes in your recipe book that you want either like a double check or you want to implement something, but you're not sure how it would credit, please feel free to send them at any point. Uh, we have interns now and we're working on some crediting things but we do continue to have rotations with interns all year so this is a standing offer feel free to just send me your recipes to my email um, all that I ask is that it has all the all the ingredients listed and I need to know the serving sizes so I'm sorry the number of servings per uh, the recipe as it was written so We'll get to crediting that and I'll send you back the information as soon as I can. So that's a great that service. That was it for me. Oh, thanks. Yes, yeah. thank you. I'm excited to get them back. Yeah, I, I'm i really excited about the, um, the response. I've had a lot of people sending recipes already and lots that lots of uh, responses that they are planning to. So they have recipes that they need to dig up and email to me. So I'm just excited that it's uh, feels valuable. Good. That's great. Cause that's such a great service. Molly, did you want to talk about um, the harvesting Montana recipes project or just announce it? Sure. Um, we just found out within the last month that we did get two more years of grant funding for team nutrition grants. And the focus of our new project, which started November 1st, will be to host a statewide recipe contest with the goal of coming up with six tried and tested recipes that feature Montana locally grown foods. And so we are scheduled to do a Wednesday webinar early December to share the details about the Harvesting Montana Recipe Contest. And for those of you who really love from scratch recipes and have a creative flair, would love to have you submit a recipe to our recipe contest. Um, so we'll be featuring six Montana foods. I'll try to do them off the top of my head. Um, sweet cherries, bison, winter squash, 
um, lentils. Thank you, lentils. And beets. And beets. <laughs> Woo! So we're really excited about it and would love it if you guys are already using recipes that use that. It can't be an existing recipe. It would be a um, unique um, recipe, um, one of your own recipes. So um, please look for information coming out about that soon in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, the goal of this project is to really to collect, USDA basically wants to collect recipes from the states to add to their national database. So when Molly says unique recipes, it's just meaning that recipes on the foods that they don't have recipes on already. And that's why if you look at the USDA recipes, they don't have one recipe on beets, even like roasted beets. So it doesn't have to be a, a hard recipe. It just needs to be a recipe that is on a food that they don't have already. So um, that's why there's no buffalo or bison recipes. There's no, there's very few cherry, lentil. So um, even if you've done a recipe, just a small amount, but you've done it, you know, as a taste test or anything, it would still count. The other one is barley. Oh yeah. Great. Well, to wrap up, we just wanted to also make sure we are still planning to do the next Farm to School Summit in August in Helena. And so just wanted to mark your calendars for August 11th and 12th. And then um, we are um, just now, the Farm to School Planning Committee is looking for workshop applications, meaning that if you, you know, are doing beef to school or you are um, really been trying to serve more local foods and have a story you want to present on to your peers and to farm school people that will be coming from all over the state, including ranchers and teachers, um, also for early care, you know, so child care if for schools and um, early care and education programs. We'd love to have you consider um, submitting a um, application, um, you know, to do a presentation. You can do it with up to three people. So if three schools wanted to get together. So if you're interested in doing any of that, let us know, um, we can help you with it. And um, we just, I think getting your story out, you guys um, are, you know, people love to hear it. it. And it's just like what Rochelle said, you know, people remember what you do for years. So it'd be really awesome to ha have a strong presence of what food service directors are doing around um, the state. So think about it. Um, future webinars that are coming up next or in two weeks is USDA Foods and DOD Fresh on November 18th. Um, the Harvesting Montana Recipe Contest is on December 2nd. There's a menu planning production records and veggie subgroups on December 9th and more menu planning and developing recipes on December 16th. So those are the webinars coming up in December, November. And then our next chat is December 3rd. So if you have a topic you want to talk about at the next chat, please let us know. You know, we're here just to try to talk about things that um, are, seem to come up of interest. And then there are some other grants um, that are available that I've just heard about. There's a Gen Youth Grant for $3,000 per school to help with COVID-related expenses. Um, and I forgot to put the link, but I'll add that um, to this before I post it. And then the USDA Farm to School grants that you, if you're really trying to um, implement a farm to school program in your school, they are out. And there's a webinar, I think, next week if you want more information. But there, um, if you need information on that, let us know. And then I just heard today, Chef And is giving scholarships out to go to professional development. So if your staff need training and you are looking for funds to support, your district and getting that training, I'd check out the Chef Ann um, website. And then um, since it's Thanksgiving, I think, um, you know, we're all thinking about gratitude and, and being thankful for our families and, you know, important people in your life. And um, I guess just wanna, I know on behalf of, of everybody at OPI and, and Team Nutrition, 
Um, we want to express our gratitude to you. Um, like I said, I was on the lunch assist chat today and they have a handout and some ideas of how to express gratitude since you know November is the month of Thanksgiving. And one of the ideas that sounded really sort of fun and you could do it with just put your paper is to set up a gratitude wall at you know where you're serving meals and invite students or parents, staff to just write what they're thankful for. And it just be um, something that would be a way to share gratitude very simply. I will um, share the handout too that Lunch Assist provided on just expressing gratitude in case um, you want other ideas. I think, you know, just saying thank you or, um, you know, giving a high five or whatever is so um, important um, and, and appreciated by people. So we just want to thank everyone and thank you for your time today and um, take good care and just stay in touch. I know uh, anything else that anybody has a question or anybody um, from OPI School Nutrition want to give any closing thoughts? No, but I'll just echo what you said. Uh, we can't say thank you enough for all you do. We have such admiration and respect for you guys. Uh, you really are out there being champions for so many kids and your hard work does not go unnoticed by us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, have a good rest of the week and um... Stay in touch and stay well.